I'm here at the NRA National Fires Museum with Ernie Lyles, Special Projects Coordinator. Did I get it right? Bingo. Oh, Bingo. Beautiful. I'm, I'm redeemed. Ernie, you specialize in the weird, wacky, wild, and wonderful here on Curator's Corner. So what do we have here? Do not disappoint me, sir. We have a Triplet and Scott rifle, Civil War era. Like Shoots already. a 5650 round, same as the Spencer round. They made six, I'm sorry, 5,000 of them. 3,000 of them were rifles, 2,000 of them were carbines. Problem, they didn't get delivered till the month before the war ended. <laughs> they were being sent to Kentucky wow. to uh, protect uh, General Sherman's supply lines. So most of them never got fired in anger. Wow. But they are kind of unique. I, I like the fact, so where were these going? These going to, how well, did, only can we figure that out in, in, in this glorious country of ours, is to, to deliver a rifle for war one month before the war ends. Mm -hmm. How do we do it? It's amazing. Anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you just flummox me there. So, uh, what, what's, so what's so unique about this? This is a seven shot repeater. Okay. Okay. I'll bite, go you ahead. You have? On this side of the gun, a loading gate right here. Okay. There's a tube running down inside the stock here wow. that held seven rounds. Wow. Seven rounds of that. Seven rounds of that. Let's get some business done with that. With those in there and the gun at half cock, you push this little lever here. It rotates around. It opens the loading gate. The spring pushes around into the barrel, bring it back up, it's ready to go. Wow. Clever. After you fire that one, when you open it up, it ejects here. After it ejects, you keep on going and it loads the next one into the barrel. So sort of the cocking motion would be to rotate the barrel. Rotate it 180. Okay, so neat, interesting. How did it work? How well did it operate? Worked fairly well, but at the end of the war, Triplet and Scott um, had uh, Meridian Manufacturing Company make these guns. It was the only gun they ever designed at the end of the war. They didn't do any more guns. Well, because they delivered them so late, of course. Yeah. They were too embarrassed. Now, most of these you find are in fairly good shape. Yeah. Except for one thing. Inside the wood where the magazine tube is, it's really close to the edge of the wood. Oh. A good percentage of them has cracked where the oh. magazine tube yeah. is. This one, this one looks good. Yeah, that looks real good. So tell us a little bit about that 5650 round. Okay, it's the same round as the Spencer shot. You take a look at it, it's a rim fire. So it, caliber is, I'm just for myself, 5650. Yeah, the caliber is approximately 52. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, okay, good. So it's just, okay, just mm -hmm. being sure, so. So I, I, you said numbers of these, how many were produced? 5,000. 5,000. 5,000 total between the carbines and the rifles. And how many are kind of still kicking around now? I tell you, there's quite a few of them out there, but you know, 5,000 is still a low number. Right. But they never got used very much, so a lot of them didn't end up getting thrown in the trash because they were worn out. So as far as collectability and desirability, this is a, a pretty collectible and desirable gun. Yeah, um, it's kind of a one off in the collecting because it never actually got used in anger in the Civil War. You know, it's not as collectible as Sharps or right. Spencers. Right. But a real unique, and, and you know, Ernie, we talk about this stuff with firearms innovation. Like, like where, you know, you wonder where this stuff came from. There's certain ways that have worked well for years, you know, mm -hmm. with revolvers and things. Someone who think, thinks of, okay, let's try this, this completely different approach and really kind of go off the reservation a little bit and try something like that. Uh, it's always got, to, it's kind of risky, right? Yeah, well, I think for, you know, each new thing that works, there's probably another 100 New things that didn't <laughs> yeah, just fell by the side. Absolutely, and, and you know what, honestly, Ernie, that's what leads us to the re innovations that really do work, is you sure. have to do a lot of experimentation and fail a few times, uh, maybe more than a few times before you find the next big thing that moves us into the next era. So really neat, love it. Weird, wacky, wild, wonderful. You've done it again early, Lyles, thank you. And thank you for being on Curator's Corner and sharing this with us. You're welcome.